Okay, good one. Okay. Okay, we're going to expect a few more latecomers uh, soon, but I'm going to get started. Um, so thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to come and have a look at the uh, webinar that we've got together. Um, uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, risk and correlation in your investment portfolio. Uh, we're going to, uh, in this, we're going to uh, discuss topics on investment portfolio construction and how a correlation matrix can help in selecting assets. Uh, so something that some people may know a little bit about and some people may not know anything about. Uh, this is a one-off webinar, but I will be recording it. So any of you want to view it again, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I will also try not to get too technical and try and keep it more of a, a general understanding of what is happening. Okay, so as promised, uh, in the webinar we're going to talk about correlation and risk um, and we are also going to discuss how qualified participants in the webinar can access our hedging strategies uh, so that, uh, oh, so what I want to do is uh, at the end I will introduce you to the performance vast trading strategies JC5 and JC7. So we will get started. Okay, for those who don't know us, Jackson Capital is a, a foreign exchange investment management company based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and here we specialise in quantitative research driven approach to investing. Uh, the big takeaway here is our company uh, brings together a, a wide pool of uh, skills and uh, people, um, all of whom are focused on the performance and management of your funds under management. Okay. For those who do know us, Jackson Capital is uh, has a number of proven traders and analysts from around the world uh, who all contribute to the ongoing development and, and trading of the currency market. Uh, so we've got a lot to go through, so let's get started. Now, investors sometimes are prone to play favourites and invest in a single asset class like uh, low returning fixed income or Australian blue chip stocks. By putting all your eggs in one basket, we've all heard this before, an investment is subject to specific and sector risk. But I'd, um, one thing you should take away is not to be discouraged of this. This is a behavioural trait uh, of most of us. Uh, who have a bias to one asset class over another. So feeling comfortable with an asset class may um, that you might understand well, like property or investing in the status quo, or uh, perhaps putting weight on a shorter term reactions rather than longer term horizons uh, makes a portfolio subject to increased risks, okay? There are many risks and biases that we face when picking an investment and how we treat that investment as well, like coming in and out too often, that can be a, a, a mistake as well. But two uh, risks that are probably the most important is specific risk and sector risk. So specific risk is uh, affects a company or a group of companies that's subject to devaluation due to internal actions. And sector risk is uh, affects a sector or an asset class which is subject to external influences such as commodity prices, government regulation or force majeure. We should also highlight market risk or uh, for uh, another term is overall risk overall market risk. This is another component which brings uh, investments under pressure. Market risk or systematic risk is an overall collapse of the market such as in 2008 when the US banking system failed. This is where all sectors and uh, assets are found themselves struggling to stay in the black. Now let's talk about the constituents of uh, a typical portfolio. As mentioned before, there are many uh, investments that can make up a portfolio like managed funds, ETFs, stocks, 
property, bonds, etc. At the beginning of our lives, we tend to focus on property as we all look for the uh, dream of owning our own home. However, uh, as we move through the stages of life, an investor may look to uh, place discretionary funds into various other investments like property, like an investment property or a managed fund or play the stock market or they might try the hand their options or forex trading. However, a well-constructed portfolio should have a diversified range of assets. For example, in a book by Burton G. Maykel, uh, uh, it was called a random walk down Wall Street. He describes a really good scenario of two investments. Let me describe it to you. One of the companies he describes sells umbrellas. The other one sells uh, is a beach holiday resort. Uh, if the season is warm, the resort can return 50%. And if the season is raining, then it loses 25%. Conversely, if the season is raining, the umbrella company returns 50% and if warm, loses 25%. In the scenario, an investor can punt on the weather and experience a boom or bust on the individual investment. However, under uh, Harry Markowitz's model portfolio theory, diversification between two assets uh, can uh, or between the two assets can return 12.5% on either weather outcome. So the key here is to diversify in uncorrelated investments. So let's explain it further. Correlation is a statistic that measures uh, the degree to which one asset moves in relation to another. This measure is calculated uh, to what is called a correlation coefficient and range, uh, ranges between 1 and negative 1. 1 means positive correlated, meaning the two uh, results are moving in the same direction. Uh, 0 means uncorrelated or you could say uncorrelated is an equal mix of correlated and positively correlated and negatively correlated uh, results and negative one is negative correlated so they're moving uh, um, in opposite directions. Let's put this into the real world. Take the uh, these two investments. One is the median uh, house price or Melbourne median house price um, which is in blue from 2010 to 2016 and we're comparing it to SYI which is an Australian select high dividend yield fund which is a popular index tracking ETF. The correlation coefficient between the two is negative point zero four six six which is almost zero so we can we can safely assume that they are uncorrelated and they will work well together in a portfolio. Building a correlation matrix though uh, of investments or assets uh, can help an investor design a portfolio so not to stack correlated assets. This can be done yourself by looking at uh, the returns of the investments. So take the return of the investment for each year and compare it to the other investments returns for each year. So you can see here we've got XJO, Melbourne Median House Price, SYI, which I mentioned before, the JCO7 Jackson Capital um, Managed Discretionary Account, okay, and VAS, VAS, which is another index tracking fund from Vanguard. You can see that the XJO uh, compared to the XJO is correlated for obvious reasons. Um, however, if we go down, move to uh, Melbourne house price and the XJO, they're similarly co correlated. However, looking at these other three, VAS, SYI and JCO7, uh, they seem to be uncorrelated to the XJO. Okay, you can see that uh, Melbourne house price uh, here, uh, these other assets here are uncorrelated to them as well. All right. So you can see 
looking uh, for uncorrelated assets is, is, you know, a way of picking which ones you're going to be in. So where's the sweet spot? Um, we have now learned that when considering uh, investments in a portfolio, risk and return are not the only elements to study. The correlation between each investment is also required to protect, protect against specific sector risk. Also, what should you be looking for? So we suggest, you know, to look for a correlation coefficient of around about negative 0.2 to 0.4. That would be nice. Remember though, the correlation uh, is only one part of choosing an investment asset. You also have to make sure that you are satisfied with the risk and the return of the investment. Okay, so that's very important as well. So only one part is the correlation. So by now you should understand how to properly diversify a portfolio. Uh, you should um, uh, to help avoid specific and sector risk. But how about overall market risk or systemic or systematic risk? Remember that this is the type of risk that usually gets everyone. The best example is 2008 financial crisis which affected the banking sector and the systemic fallout which then provoked all other sectors. So you may have heard of a hedge fund or hedge or heard of investment companies called hedge funds. These are simply investment companies that try to outperform a long-term benchmark uh, such as an index. However, recently a simple index tracking fund, especially in the United States, have yielded higher returns due to the bull market that they're experiencing and cheaper management costs. So I quote here uh, from results that have come as part of the 2016 uh, Prequin Alternative Assets Performance Monitor, which is an independent research and data provider. Hedge funds routinely brought in double digit uh, return figures from 2009 to 2013, seemingly to rebound quickly from the financial quiet crisis in 2008. But last, but in the last years have been more difficult for the risky ventures. Uh, as figures from the first half of 2016 indicate, the first six months of the year saw industry-wide returns of just 1.09%, down somewhat from overall 2015 returns of 1.97%. Okay, so you can see there that hedge funds, which are trying to outperform the benchmark, are not necessarily doing that well at the moment doesn't mean they're dead because the market will always change though. Instead of long-term investing, I set and forget, a hedge fund firm will, uh, will have active managers and traders who will consistently analyze and assess their trades to try to capture um, more reward and mitigate risk. They also look for anomalies. Uh, to find un, unseen value in an asset. However, the more actively managed a fund, the more expensive it becomes. This is due to additional costs of highly experienced analysts and traders. Therefore, sometimes hedge funds may not outperform their benchmark. So, hedge funds try to outperform their benchmark or invest in value areas. So it would be prudent to include such an asset in a portfolio. The problem is most hedge level funds are not usually available to retail investors. Additionally, the benchmark, they track benchmark uh, uh, they benchmark an index, I meant to say, sorry, they benchmark an index. So performance, even though performance, their performance can be negative, they can still claim performance fees because they're outperforming the benchmark, which is kind of counterintuitive. 
This is where Jackson Capital is a little bit different. We are a hedge level firm offering investors access to a hedging solution that plugs into your investment portfolio to reduce financial risk and increase overall returns. So you have a, let's say that you have a portfolio which includes property, you have a handful of blue chip shares or an ETF, but what about including a hedge against systematic risk and risk of those two sectors um, and increasing the overall return of that portfolio? So let's run two scenarios. Let's run two scenarios where we assume you've, we've got a valuation of $1 million in 2010. So you've got property, okay? And this is the value of the property. This is not the, uh, this is not the, um, the equity in the property. This is the value, okay? So 70% of your holding is into the property, which is 700,000. In scenario one, we have an investment portfolio which includes JC07. And we have uh, scenario two, uh, which does not include JC07. So you can see here, I've got just a 10% allocation, which has been moved from the VAS allocation. Okay, so VAS fund, I've moved 10% of it into, into JC07. And we can now see what the difference will be between the two, okay? The portfolio without JC07, which is in orange, returned 405,000, uh, 039.87. And the one with JC07 returned uh, 625,000, 014.76. This means a reasonably reasonable amount or reasonable allocation of 10 percent to jc07 over the six-year period added an extra 219,974 to the portfolio okay so our high return um uh a hedge against uh, systematic risk and it can also be against uh, sector risk as well if you've only got one other one other um, asset in your portfolio all right all right let's just quickly talk about what we are and what we do um, our products provide a new paradigm for private investors to access sophisticated currency products without incumbent knowledge experience and time required to uh, trade the complex and fast-moving currency market uh, you have control, flexibility, transparency uh, of your investment without having to worry about any of the work involved. Our experienced investment managers uh, and traders um, uh, will trade your individually managed account. We're not, a, we're not a fund, so you're not pooled. And you can watch what we're doing live as well. Um, Jackson Capital offers a portfolio of dynamic, high-growth foreign exchange investment products which are designed to perform well through market volatility. Um, Jackson Capital also prides ourselves on offering a product which is true portfolio diversification with low correlation to traditional assets. We recommend 5 to 10% of your uh, portfolio to what we do and um, so that you can properly uh, protect yourself against systematic risk. Jackson Capital aims to achieve a net return of in excess of 20% per annum. Of course, though, there can be no assurances that the MDA will achieve this objective. However, you can see from our past history that we have achieved it. We've got uh, two uh, strategies or two, two funds that you can invest in. Uh, we suggest investing in both to diversify across both. However, it's up to you. Um, okay, next, I'll do the next slide. 
JC5, you can see JC5 here, uh, February so far we're up 4.77% for the quarter, we're down one year, one year performance, uh, if we take, you know, one year performance is 32.71%, two year performance is 24%, we haven't had, got enough data for five years, we're up since inception um, 120% and uh, we've got standard deviation, or which is another way of saying what our volatility is, 5% move, okay. JCI7 is more of a macro trend strategy. Uh, we have been uh, moving sideways on this strategy for the last six months. But uh, you can see one year is 40, up 46%. Three year is 31% per annum. And five years is 38% per annum. Since inception, we're up 637%, and we've got a higher standard deviation in that one of 9.16%. Okay, fees and costs, is, we, we take a performance fee of 30%. There's no monthly subscription fee, no entry and exit fees that you would, like you would experience with a managed fund. You can withdraw or deposit at any time. There's no redemption periods, okay? Okay, if anybody's got a question, please put it down so that I can, uh, in the chat, so I can answer it for you. If you would like to get a hold of us to have a talk about our investment, you can visit our website to get more details, download our product guide, which I'm sure you've already done. Um, or you can give Michael Campbell a call. Um, he is our account executive here um, on that email address or that phone number and we will endeavour to answer all the questions that you've got. I will send you, I will be posting this video, uh, this as a video, so um, you can re-watch it if you wish. Okay, so if anybody's got any questions, please type away, and I will answer them for you. I will leave it there, and uh, hopefully you got something out of tonight, and uh, we will all speak very soon. Okay, thanks.